Okay, cool. We are now recording, and let's go into the game. We are looking at the players now for the Radiant Team. This is Team Complexity. We are in the semifinals. This is the best of three between no Tidehunter and Complexity. Uh, on the Radiant Team, TC is going to be playing Sniper on the bot lane. We've got Bulba playing Templar Assassin. going to be going mid Fluff and stuff, playing Rubik. Ix Mike is on the Jakiro, and the other stand is going to be Mikey, and he's playing an off lane Beastmaster. Yep, baby Roshan. Is it there? Baby Golden Roshan. Oh, Roshan. damn, yep. it is. I think that yeah. might be Fluffs. Or Ix Mike's. I believe both of them were going for those, but they've got one. Yeah, it's pretty. that's pretty cool. Uh, for the Dire team, this is Team No Tidehunter. Our stand-in today replacing Loda is going to be in the bush. Uh, I don't know if that's just based on his uh, stand-in tag or not, but uh, that's who he is, I guess. Uh, Eternal Envy is going to be playing Shadow Demon again. Played a fantastic Shadow Demon yesterday. Uh, Aki is playing Chen, his signature hero, one of his two. Uh, S4 is going to be playing Darkseer solo mate again, and the last player is going to be Admiral Bulldog doing the offlane again. Yep. Um, so very similar lineup from yesterday, and... Uh... As far as complexity goes, of course, we didn't get to see them yesterday, uh, but they they were wrecking some stuff. Uh, I know that Bulba was uh, playing Booger on the uh, on the on a tri lane yesterday, and they had a uh, Shadow Fiend played by uh, what's his face, Korok. Oh really? But, uh, Korok not cool. here uh, today, so. That's awesome to see. Eternal Envy is going to try to counter this ward here, and Ike's Mike is currently. Trading some hits here with Shadow Demon. He's going to disrupt him, getting ready to do some extra damage here. Nice, Mike. There's so many illusions hitting on him here. That's like all of his HP, and he's only got tangos as well. So he's going to have to go high ground now, and there's the Observer Ward that he will spot out, and he's going to be able to counter that. So nice play by Eternal Envy. It's going to shut down at least one Observer Ward out of complexity in the early game. Yep, definitely. And um, what stats are good for the stream to see? Um, you think I should just keep... Uh, pull last hits and denies up for the early part of the game, and then after that you can kind of shift through things depending on what you feel like looking at. So just, okay. just leave last hits and denies up, because that's what's going to tell the most about what's going on in other lanes without having to look there. That sounds good. And uh, try not to move your screen too fast. That's probably the only other tip I'll give you, because you don't want people to get disoriented. Um, on fine. The I'm sorry? Oh, you said fine? Fine. Okay, cool. Uh, on the bot lane, TC is still getting free farm here. Um, Fluff is actually doing the pulling. He's trying to shut down the trees a little bit, and he will be able to get a couple of them. Needs two hits on this last treant, I think. It's going to get out of there. Bulldog puts one more hit in to guarantee that it comes through. And the treant is killed. And perfect timing there. He ends up pulling up into the creep wave. Perfect place for him to have the creep set, as Fluff does continue to harass Bulldog. Now, the important part is Sniper's getting free farm this game, and it's kind of uncommon to see this in pub games, at least, but I'm very interested to see where he goes for an item build. Now, Headshot is much better. He also has Taken, which is going to give him a lot more lane prominence, and he's right-clicking Admiral Bulldog. I don't think they'll kill him here, but they're just doing it to harass, and he's going to be put down semi-low while he still does get a couple last hits. But if TC maxes out, he's actually looking like he's going to max Headshot first, up to 40 Headshot damage here. I mean, if he can proc this while he's harassing somebody, that's 90 physical damage. That's insane output. Yeah, um, Shrapnel, a lot of people I see get one level of it. I particularly like Headshot and, and uh, Take Aim. And uh, just just because, like, once you get your ult, you want to try to spam it most of the time. And, and mm -hmm. Shrapnel, you know, if you're spamming Shrapnel prior to that, uh, it can mess you up. But I think one level of Shrapnel is okay. Uh, maybe to help a teammate and then slow down a, a someone else or someone like that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that Shrapnel is the right spell for... Uh, Sniper, though. Yeah, if you do kind of a tri lane push, you can use uh, Sniper for that because your Shrapnel is pretty decent at pushing towers and clearing creep waves. But other than that, it does limit his early game potential for sure. And another cool thing to point out um, the Shrapnel or the headshot damage is physical. So if you end up getting any minus armor on your team, such as with TA, that's going to stack directly with the headshot here. And TC is already going to be orb walking Bulldog. He's got boots and Bulldog does not. So he's going to do some hit trading. Doesn't end up losing a creep either during his harass, which is very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, safe lane on the top lane. It's going to be Sven. He's got a Quelling Blade. 17 last hits on him versus the 15 of TC. So TC doing a nice job. And if we compare the long lane here, it's Mikey barely getting any experience at all here, whereas Bulldog is up to level 3. So Nature's Prophet's slightly better as a long lane. Yeah, and I got to point out too, uh, Bulba doing a much better job than uh, Pulse was doing yesterday, uh, fairing up against the Dark Seer at mid. Uh, Pulse was really having a lot of trouble with their TA against Dark Seer, and uh, Bulba is just destroying it. Really? Uh, Bobo's at 19 and 9 here. S4 nine. is up to 9 last hits. Holy crap. Bobo really is crushing. This is seriously impressive. I mean, compared to what we saw yesterday, just like you said, it was 
break even for the TA, and S4 is not a bad player, but he's actually getting crushed by mm -hmm. Bulba's last hitting mid. I mean, really showing the power of Templar Assassin. I know Bulba is obviously a fantastic player, but I mean, if you get plus 60 damage and you deny, that's the important part. And I think that's really why S4 is getting shut down a little bit here. It's because yeah, he is I actively denying the Darkseer. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the, the, the nice on the creeps are so important because Darkseer uses the uh, Iron Shell to push so much with that. And, uh, you know, it, you, you really can't control how Iron Shell behaves. Uh, once you put it on, so mm -hmm. denying the creeps that, it, that, that that's uh, that's something that I don't think Pulse was doing properly, and Bulba with already with 15 denies, that's pretty wow. insane. Some really minutes. cool strat coming out of no tide hunter here. If you notice, the the darkster just left the mid lane, and he had two three stacked camps or two stacked camps, so one small camp and one medium camp. So what he did, he was he left the mid lane, and then he just took out a couple stacked camps that the, his allies had set up for him. And keep in mind that he was also not doing the best in the mid lane. So this is like a really good way for him to translate this into a lot of experience. And now he's uh, over level six here, despite being in the jungle. He'll probably shift back mid again. And the rest of his team currently four men pushing top, but like really cool strat here, giving dark. Darkseer a little bit of an EXP and level advantage over Bulba in the mid lane. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Top tower is being pushed by no Tidehunter now. Um, they've got four here. Bulldog level three with two levels of Treants is enough. Um, he's got a Basilius as well, so armor, and he's going to teleport to the bot lane. Is now Sniper, as well as Fluff can push in and try to do some damage to the tower. Three levels of Headshot now on Sniper, and he's got Phase Boots, so his chase is insane now. And the uh, Nature's well Prophet's got to be... Like Facebook's yeah. early on, five minutes in it, that's, um, it, it's just such a great damage output from, um, from Sniper. It could just pretty much drop any hero, um, at this, at this point in the game really easily, really fast. Yeah, and the nicest thing about it is Sniper's base damage early on is actually pretty crappy, so this is going to help out a lot in terms of, um, just making sure that he gets every last hit, even if he doesn't get a headshot. Fluff gonna try to catch Bulldog, pull, pulling him back. There's the ulti coming through on Bulldog, and TC needs a couple right clicks. Fluff gets it, that's first blood on the bot lane. Kind of a really cool duel lane, I must say. I mean, rather than having something like a Vengeful Spirit nuke, or a Crystal Maiden nuke, they have a Rubik, who can not only nuke, but also pull the hero towards the sniper, which will give him extra last hits in, or at least extra harass. It's such a cool hero to combo with. Sniper, and I love to see. I love that he's getting played. This is really fun. I can't wait to see how this game turns out. I do have to agree with you, and that purge it's not really cool. Okay, cool. Lane. So you're saying my my voice is even more robotic than normal? No, don't be silly. No, just for a second there. Okay, good. <laughs> um, now Furion is trying to harass the sniper a little bit, or uh, at least keep him from last hitting the the actual like more important creeps, I, I suppose, but. I mean, those trends will give him extra HP. Sure, not a lot of money, but still, I I'm not even sure if that's worth it. Do you think it is? Uh, harassing with the Treants? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, generally it is. I mean, he probably lost at least a slight amount of EXP, but that's pretty much all that Nature's Prophet can do at this point, to be honest. Like, there's he can't come to lane that easily because the Sniper's got a phase advantage over him, plus he has lots of headshot levels, and this is the entire point of doing a safe lane solo. As far as getting ganked mid, Ice Path is actually going to whiff on him, doesn't catch him, and he goes in Viz. Uh, that's the more important part. But yeah, you want to always make sure that your support hero harasses their long lane enough to give your hard carry an advantage. That way you have three or four levels over him, and despite them having a more reliable early game hero you've got a uh, item and exp advantage over him and you should be able to just dominate the solo from here on out so fluff can go gank other lanes and bulldog's got to worry about fighting against a level seven sniper who has a huge advantage over him definitely uh fluff still sticking around though uh probably i mean there's there there are no words for bulldog so he could get caught up position he's uh, he's fortunately for him he's being really careful about that but uh, the tower is getting pretty low, so I wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, oh, it looks like Fluff might go from... Uh, do you think he's going to go from behind? Uh, looks like it. As long as he gets a telekinesis off, that's all it takes. And in the meantime, we'll see maybe TC try to start pushing this. But he's not... Oh, no, he's just placing a ward. Cool. Just wants to put a ward down for the vision. There's a smoke gank by No Tide Hunter, by the way, coming towards the top ancients. They may catch Mikey here. He's just looking to stack. There's a soul catcher TP from Admiral Bulldog as well. He's in a lot of trouble. There's the Sprout as well. He's going to eat a tango to get out for just a second. Oh, wow. One disruption. He's in big trouble here. Bulba's coming in, maybe going to slow him down, but there's four heroes here. Does he really want to? There's the cleave coming through. Got to catch a couple of heroes and units, but there's a lot of stuff to cleave through there, and they're going to end up surviving. And they yeah, spotted the, the that. Sprout almost, almost messed everything up. <laughs> that was pretty funny. He, it blocked everyone behind mm -hmm. it, but uh, 
the Shadow Demon was playing close to attention and he could uh, disrupt on top of that, so that's Wow. Good. They're going to be stealing these Ancients right now. Very smart from No Tide Hunter. This is exactly what Beastmaster needed to try to catch up in levels in EXP, and a lot of it's getting stolen from him. That's going to hurt pretty bad, and especially the fact that No Tide Hunter even had the possibility to do this. They not only have uh, lots of creeps here as well, but now is Sven. So tons of physical damage. He's going to work right down. He doesn't have any cleave yet. But they will work these down, and as they do, they're getting a lot of experience that should have gone to complexity. So really nice snag by them. Yeah, and uh, we can see a huge difference in the way that uh, Bush and uh, Loda plays plays Van here. Uh, he he like uh, Bush here has one level of work right, one gut strength, and four storm hammers. Where Loda usually stayed uh, at two storm hammers, started maxing cleave and uh, work right a little bit faster. I think you're, I think you're confusing him with Fog Sven, the Dignitas oh. Sven. It was the Dignitas Sven that had the different build. But in that oh, case, okay. it would have been better to have cleave. I totally agree with you there. Because if he had cleave, they would have been able to do more damage to the ancients rather than just doing single target damage. He would have been able to pick those off slightly faster. I think. Um, yeah, was I, I, Loda getting the same build then? I the think Loda was going him? this build as well, because that Sven build, that was the first time I'd seen that, seen that Sven build, build before. So I'm pretty sure that was Fog, that, um, maybe not pioneered, but the first place I've seen the build at least. Mm -hmm. Bulba's got to be really careful about these creeps with Iron Shell, they're so good. Um, couple last hits coming through. He's going to get all three. DD's popped for him. And if we look at the graphs really quick, still a one-to-one -one game, by the way. Complexity is actually in the lead, despite their Ancients being snagged. EXP breaking pretty close to even, uh, except it's in no Tide Hunter's favor. So very slight gold advantage for Complexity, very slight EXP advantage for no Tide Hunter. And TC actually picks up a Maelstrom. He's going to go for a Maelstrom this game. Um, gives him attack speed, that's the best part. Attack speed will allow him more chances to proc headshot. And also, he gives him some AoE as well, because the Maelstrom can shoot a Chain Lightning, and that's going to clear the Creep Wave slightly faster. So in some ways, you can look at this item kind of as a ranged Battle Fury, and you can still stack this with other orbs as well. Things like Lifesteal or Desolator. It's not completely stacking, but still very good. Um, can you only stack this uh, with uh, Lifesteal and Desolator? Um, are those the only two? Or you can, can also you stack, stack it, it completely, I believe, with uh, Eye of Scotty. I have Scotty um, Mjolnir is actually a very good build. Not necessarily something that's common. I think um, maybe so Maelstrom... So you could actually go I have Scotty, Mjolnir, and Lifesteal? Uh, I think so, yes. I believe so. Um, whenever the Lightning procs, the Lifesteal doesn't. But since it only procs about 25% of the time, you're generally getting some most Lifesteal. Big Souls on Darkseer. About the top uh, Ancient series. Here comes the crits on S4. He's going to be getting semi-low here, but can he save him? He's going to try to send back. Great send back from Aki. It's going to be close. He's not going to make it. Barely gets killed. Good attempt, but Aki using his ulti to try to shut that down, but it didn't happen. So, no save there. Good response by Complexity. Um, yeah! Nice plays there. Sniper on the bot lane now has four levels of take aim. His attack range is 850. Huge, okay. huge range out of this. And since he has phase boots, positioning is going to be extremely crucial here. Now, I'm not really... Will be extremely crucial here, is what he said. Yeah, <laughs> in a robot voice. I'm sure. I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> but you all get the point. That was a cool thing, and uh, Chen almost saved them, I think, is what he was like. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's exactly what I said. Oh, there, you're kind of back. Okay, good. Come back to me, internet. Quit being terrible. I'll treat you right. Pay your bill. Yeah, man. Pamper my Holy router. Holy guacamole, I wish I could uh, could have better camera skills. I don't even know, what am I pressing here on the on the left? <laughs> uh, I'm on net worth right now. Sniper that's, that's is that's the great. most expensive person. Just barely. And, uh, Slightly yeah. ahead of Bulba here. Bulba actually has Blink Dagger at the moment. Pretty fantastic for him. Um... TC, yeah. still no new items yet. He's actually going to try to headshot this Wildkin, very cool. And once he headshots the Wildkin, the tornado is no more. Take that Wildkin. See you, Wildkin. Wildkin. Yes, Wildkin. Um, yeah, Wildkins are, are pretty awesome if you can get them in the jungle or like like level 1 and stuff. Like You can pretty much kill any camp with the tornado. And uh, the tornado is such a great harassing tool as well. Um, despite of how slow it is. Yeah, another but we cool... Have, um, 
go ahead. Another cool thing that you can see a sniper do is actually attack towers without the towers being able to return fire. And they're really, they really want to take this mid tower. There's four heroes here. Only hero that's not here is going to be Mikey on the Beastmaster. He's trying to make up for his big loss of EXP from the Ancient Camps. And are they going to take it? Boba goes in. There's the Glyph. This is going to be the point of fighting. Fluff eats the Soul Catcher. Nature's Prophet ulti comes through as well. And now they have to see, is it going to get denied? TC's going to have to back off. And they're going to be able Looks to Looks like it, it will. And you mentioned this before, uh, losing, uh, like getting a tower denied over killing it, it's the difference in gold is like something like six to eight hundred. Uh, seven right? to eight hundred gold that you lose seven on Seven to eight hundred? Yeah. So, I mean, that's insane. Do you think it would even be worth it if like Sniper or someone else, like perhaps Volba, uh, with the Templar Assassin, like just stayed and tried to get the tower even if it got him, got him killed afterwards? Um. It, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, they can now do stuff. If they would have traded for the tower there, they wouldn't be able to do the smoke ink right now that we're seeing Bulba do. So and generally, it's not worth it, I would say. Uh, they're coming for a kill on S4. There's the initiation. They do get the telekinesis off. Here comes the ice path follow-up, and a dual breath is going to guarantee the nice. kill. That was really that was awesome close. Teamwork. Yeah, and they wouldn't have been able to do that 100% if they traded a hero for the top tower. Um, right. They might even turn this into a tier 2 tower push. If they can take the tower here... I, then I would say totally worth it. Um, I'd also like to point out Sniper picked up a point booster. This means he is going Scotty for sure this game. Um, I'm expecting to see a Scotty out of him. Um, Scotty plus a Maelstrom. The coolest thing about this, Scotty gives him tons of stats. So this fills his low HP hole. It gives him agility. It also gives him int, so more nukes. And finally, um, it gives him a slow, a ranged slow. It's insanely good. Yeah, absolutely. Scotty's a really good item, especially since... Or whenever they like, um, they buffed it. Like it was a, it was a lot more expensive before, right? Like you had to buy a recipe and stuff, and then they, I guess they really liked Scotty and wanted to see it. Like uh, it gets some replay and replace the recipe, the twelve hundred dollar recipe for a, a orb of venom. And the point so. booster, I think, yeah. it's It has gotten a little less expensive over time. And all around, the stats are great. I mean, you get $25 attributes and 200 health. It's not an amazing damage item, but Sniper generally needs survivability uh, more than anything else. And the utility is also fantastic. So if he plays this right, he's always going to be sitting at the outside of battles with his Eye of Scotty range just pinging away. And this is also going to allow him to grab Shrapnel. He doesn't have to be like, oh, I need so much HP, I'll have to grab stats this game. He can grab Shrapnel and still be pretty effective as a hero. So I'm pretty excited to see this build. I've done it before in a pub game and it was so fun promise try it yeah. sometime yeah I, I, I like that he went for the point booster uh right away as well mm -hmm. yeah instead of trying to wait for a for a for a norb or something like that yeah it's that's cool. very smart uh, not as much damage obviously that way but the uh survivability is fantastic ah! Ah! did i did i lose connection again no i fucked it up i i left the game really well i left the well i didn't leave the game because, yeah, yeah. Right? you're gonna reconnect right yeah Okay. Clicked on something. I see. All right, we're good. Oh, holy guacamole. So they're pushing in. It looks like they're going to be fighting at the Aegis. Dire team does finish it up, though. Axe is going to hit a couple. Telkinesis puts Envy trapped in completely by neutrals. He's trying to get out, but he can't. And Bulba's doing some iron shell damage in here to his allies, actually. Baby Off Roshan, luck. what a boss. Run away. Run away, baby Roshan. It looks like it's a big team fight loss for Complexity, though. Four heroes dying. Only Shadow Demon dying from the Dire team. And that is now what Complexity wanted. And they got the Aegis right before the fight started. And they didn't even burn the Aegis. Sven went down to half HP, but that was it. Yeah. And uh, up until this point, like, they were doing a pretty good job. Complexity was uh, keeping the Sven from farming too much. Uh, with uh, TA and Sniper farming a lot better. So I, I feel like they didn't really need to engage that. It, it, they probably just wanted to stop Rosh, but I, I yeah. think uh, sitting back might have might have might have just been better. I mean, uh, they I, I think I think that they have the better late game potential right now, or or as it was going right. Yeah, with Sniper, I would say yes. As long as Sniper can stay away from Sven, it's gonna be fine. And the, we talk, you know, we talked about the Sanjin Yasha on Razor being good against a melee hero. Who needs a Sanjin and Yasha when you have a Scotty? You guarantee mm -hmm. the slow. You, every single hit is going to slow Sven down unless you proc lightning 85 times in a row or whatever. If you could yeah. just have an Eye of Scotty ranged on a Sniper versus a Sven, Sven can't get close to you ever. It's not going to happen. And that's yeah, what we might see late game. Yeah. Like, is Sniper really going to be the hero counter to Sven? He could be. And we might just see it this game. He hasn't died yeah. yet. Three assists. TC's doing well, so this could get late. Yep. Definitely. I mean, yeah, we've been uh, since Sven getting a lot of a lot more play lately, and if as a result Sniper gets a lot more play, that would be awesome.
Uh, so we see uh, we see here uh, teams like Complexity being creative with their picks, and uh, I really I really hope that they find a uh, counter to Sven and Sniper. That would be that would be really cool to see. Yeah, it would be super cool. Um, Arm, let's see item choice on Sven. We saw this yesterday from I believe Diggy Toss, and it worked out fabulous. Armlet plus the ulti. Um, he's got an Ogre Club, so he's very close to BKB on top of that. Downside is BKB is not going to stop things like Sniper very well, and Roar is still going to go right through Magic Community. So Sven might still have some troubles this game, and he's going to be the DPS monster that no Tide Hunter needs, as uh, Nature's Prophet is, does really not have a lot of items right now. Just sitting on hand of Midas with Treads. He will be able to catch up and get some core items in a second, but um, for now, the main damage source out of no Tide Hunter is really just going to be Sven. So as long as they so, can keep roaring him, it'll be good. So would you, would you think that... Uh... Getting the BKB at all is the right call here for, for Sven, this particular game? It's probably still worth it because of uh, Twin-Headed Dragon as well as the Rubik. They both still have hard disables, and especially Rubik if he steals a God's Hammer or something. I mean, there's going to be too many stuns to deal with. He has to get a BKB, in my opinion. Um, he's still going to get roared, but that's only 3 to 4 seconds, depending on his level. So it's he's still going to have troubles with getting disabled, but it won't be the end of the world. I, I just, uh, right. Jakiro's too hard to play against as a melee hero if you don't have a BKB. Because even Dual Breath, even Ice Path, it's going to slow you down so much. The slow and the disable are just way too much to deal with. Okay. If people on the stream can't understand Perch, let me know, by the way. I can I can make up, like, the great majority of things you say. Good. Oh, this uh, this tower at bottom is going to fall down. And uh, Darkseer doesn't get the last hit, unfortunately, for him there. And we might see a big engagement here. Everyone's smoked. And they're going in. Boba's going to try to pick off Aki first. There's the mini stun. Uh, stun comes in on Fluff. Actually, he takes a lot of damage. Chi sees him from the backside. He's trying to stop everybody. S4 taking some right clicks, but he's got to run away. Oh my god. Bush is chasing. He's really fast with the surge from the dark and he picks him off very easily. Great disables there. Mikey now trying to escape. Roar has been used, and he's not done yet. There's another surge on Sven. Who needs Mask of Madness when you have this? And they still crush the team fight in the bot jungle. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. I have a question for you. Why go for uh, Chen in a team fight like that when there's uh, Shadow Demon and stuff like that? Um, Chen is generally an easy hero to kill, and he does. Um, if you don't kill Chen, he's going to send somebody back. So if you just dive after the Chen and hopefully get the kill, then things should be alright for you. But the problem was that probably TA slow is not just not enough to shut him down. Um, to keep him slow enough to get the kills. And Bulba has decent items, but he hasn't had like a fantastic game. Um, he's gotten a lot of last hits. I believe he's probably in the lead. Um, no, he's not. I'm sorry. Third place. But um, he's doing okay, but he's just got a Blink and an Ogre Club, which are both utility items. If he actually had a Daedalus or something, he probably would have killed Chen faster. And another thing to point out, Aki has abnormally high HP right now. He bought a Bracer and Power Treads. We almost never see Power Treads on Chen. But we're seeing it this game. So he had a lot more HP, and Bulba was probably expecting to be able to kill him faster than that. Yeah, I mean, Shadow Demon only with uh, 800 HP. Uh, reason for which I ask is I saw the, the Chen uh, ult and then I was like, uh, okay, so he already ulted. Uh, he will probably mech if he needs to. So why, like, he, he can't do anything past this while the Shadow Demon could, like, help out with the team fight in, uh, to, to a great extent. So I didn't quite understand, but I guess uh, sending someone to base uh, would be one of, the, one of the main reasons for which you want to kill the Chen first. Yeah, that's uh, probably the main one there. And maybe he just got Tunnel Vision, he saw it and said, okay, this is what I want to happen. Want to kill this guy for sure, but who knows? Um, Sven picks up a Mask of Madness next, so he's got the full combo armlet, Mask of Madness with BKB, lots of mid-game items, but they combo together so effectively in team fights. Now, um, unlike we saw in some of the previous games, the BKB is not going to save him against sniper damage once again. We mentioned this before, but um, he is going to have to have some worry if sniper ends up getting really farmed of still taking too much damage, because Mask of Madness increases the damage you take by 30%, but that's not going to stop physical damage at all. So Sniper can possibly kill him through that. But for now, all he's got is an Ultimate Orb. He still needs one more Ultimate Orb and a Poison... Orb of Venom, sorry. So he's still about 2,500 gold from finishing Scotty. Actually, he changes up his item build. He goes for a Hyper Stone next. So he's going to finish me only before he finishes the Scotty, surprisingly. Mm, why do you think that is? Um, probably because Scotty wouldn't give him enough DPS is my guess. Uh, Scotty would give him the utility and the good HP, but not like crap loads of damage. So I think he's going to finish Mjolnir first, just so that he can do higher damage output and offset some of his low attack speed from having phase boosts. So, but he will be grabbing do, do Scotty after. Was, do you think that was a decision that, that he made during the game? Something something like, you know what, guys? Like, we're kind of getting this trade. We need some more DPS. Let's go, let's go for, like, uh, the Mjolnir first. Or it's, do you think yeah. that was his plan from the I start? I think it's a possibility that that was the case, because... Um, 
I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. If he was doing really well, he might just go Scotty first because you can't come back. Like, if somebody is winning by a lot and then their sniper gets a Scotty, there's no way they're ever going to catch up to you because every time you engage somebody, they're permanently slowed, basically. Right. Um, I, I feel that's how they felt because before the Roshan fight, when he started getting the Scotty, they were definitely in a pretty good spot. Yeah. They were probably feeling comfortable and his concern was, oh, okay, like, let's keep our lead. Um, now, now they're kind of in a spot where they kind of have to make stuff happen and they, they have to kill their opponents. So they, they have to play it a little bit riskier, so to say. Yeah, I would completely agree here. Uh, Sniper picks up one level of shrapnel. Now he's going stats, so he just wanted some slight disable. Way, no. It's what? It's done the, yep. the super hammer of doom. Yeah, it's not too expensive once you get your first maelstrom. Then it's just a hyperstone, a little recipe, so pretty easy to get. Um, and, but he will be going Scotty from here on out, I think. It might be a Manta. We could see a Manta style as well, but I'd be a little surprised, especially because we saw it yesterday. Sven's really good against illusions and Mantas and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, complexity, what will they do at this point? The map control is really well in no Tidehunter's favor. With uh, Ancients being blocked, look at all the other map control they have. They're going to try to push top, possibly. S4 coming to the wave, but he's got a Shiva's Guard to finish already. And there's the Telkinesis. Bulb is going to go as well. He's got a Guard to fuck shit up, is what Kurt was trying to say. Yep. And uh, we have Bulba popping the BKB, and he's just going to go to slow Eternal MB. Eternal MB trying to fight back. And now he's gonna turn around, wait for the BKB to, to end, and then try to disrupt, but nope. They decide not to chase. Uh, probably a smart decision, seeing that the entire complexity team is back there. Hmm. And, uh, yeah. Thanks. Purge is back, I think. Test, test, hello? Yep. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the TA is looking better. The problem is that the, she used her BKB there and was forced to. Eternal Envy with a solid play. Demonic Purge goes right through Magic Immunity. So you can use it to slow. Another great counter to Sven, actually, if you think about it. If you can just use that every time he uses a BKB, can slow him by quite a bit. He won't be able to get damage off. But it's on the Dire team, so um, Bulba's going to have to be the one to deal with that. They did kill the Darkseer, though, so I think Complexity is completely happy with that. They, they had used a BKB charge, but they got a kill, so they'll be happy. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure the BKB used. Like, it, it, there, there couldn't have been another way. I, I think they used it to kill... Uh, to kill the Darkseer and to prevent the the Shadow Demon from using Disruption. But then he tried to go for the, dark, the for the Shadow Demon and it just didn't work out well for them. Hmm. But that, that overall was uh, pretty good. Mikey is still pretty behind on farm here. He's up to 2,000 gold. Um, has had three deaths and two assists this game. It's tough doing a long lane Beastmaster if you don't get that really big acceleration of Ancient Gold. So pretty understandable for him that he's had kind of a rough time here. Um, yeah, they, they stole it pretty hard. Yeah, they definitely did. Templar Assassin. Uh, he... Go ahead. Uh, he's going for a crit next, is what I was going to say. He's got the broadsword picked up, so we will see some carry potential out of him soon. Where is she? It's not going to be a blade mail or a battle fairy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. Pro probably not. Yeah, those are well, the only Blade items. mail couldn't be too bad, seeing that there's a Savannah game, right? It could be sick. She doesn't have enough HP to leverage it well. She would reflect at max, like, what, 1,200 damage? No, reduced, of course. Well, yeah. yeah so if you get a blade mill and you activate it and you have refraction on, it doesn't do absolutely anything? I don't know if it will. Um, I'm guessing it won't reflect. Mm -hmm. If you're blocking the damage source with refraction, I don't think it reflects. If it does, it would be kind of a cool idea, but probably not completely worth it. Um, the int is a little wasted. And even still, you you most mostly just want to be a glass cannon at this point out, especially because he has BKB. So, someone said in Dota one it reflected. It did. Okay. Um. So that that's kind of cool. Yeah, I might be wrong about that one. Yeah, I have no idea. Someone tested. And we see the No Tide Hunter killing uh, Roshan one more time. So. Hmm. Uh, Sven's pretty rich, man. Sven's Sven's yeah. gonna Sven's gonna reach a point where he's gonna have that. Um, a similar build to what we saw yesterday with a lot of mid-game items, uh, but uh, a lot of damage as well. He might go for a Daedalus next, I would guess. Yeah, I would I would agree completely. Either a Daedalus or an AC, but probably will be Daedalus. Oh man, Eternal Envy is such great counter warding here. He's going to catch a ward in the Dire Jungle. Yeah, that's kind of his thing. He's he's so good at that, and uh, later on we'll probably see him with a gem. Uh, he has a Ghost Scepter. I love that item on Support Heroes. I love that item in general, and, and I'm glad it sees more play than it used to these days. Um, but I, I just I just love seeing it in play. It's like, oh, he's dead. Never mind. You know, like that yeah. kind of thing. I, I, I really enjoy. Especially against a sniper, it's fantastic. Or a TA. They've got two heroes that rely almost uh, almost entirely on physical damage. 
And he's gonna have Ghost Scepter now, so he'll be able to at I least mean, stop even that the, Even the Beastmaster, like the Wild Axes are a physical as well. Yeah, that's true. You can dodge it. Well, they're composite, but you can dodge them with uh, Ethereal Blade, I believe. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yes. So, still more farming from Complexity now. Ix Mike in the jungle a bit. Um, nice. Fluff is also gonna pull some creeps together. This is very smart. Faster way to jungle. And they're gonna grab him with Dual Breath as well, I think. Yeah, here's the Dual Breath. Fluff wants to grab the last hits. He's up to 1,000 gold. He's actually had a pretty good game. Four kills on him, two deaths, and two assists. Not doing too bad, considering the rest of the team. But Sven yeah. is going to be the one that they have to worry about. And Sniper is getting very, very close to Scott. He's picked up his first, first ultimate orb. So he's only about 1,800 gold away. And then he will have that slow. He's going to have tons of HP out of this. And pretty damn good damage as well, considering the Mjolnir. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's going to be fun to see. I love the animation on Mjolnir as well. Yep, sounds good. Is that cool. how you say it? Mjolnir? Yep, Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Who came up with that? I think it's, uh... Mjolnir. It's like, it's, uh Mjolnir. What's the word? Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Uh, hey, Norse? Diego, how do you say this in Spanish? <laughs> how do you say it? <laughs> huh? Mjolnir? <laughs> really? No, it's, that's not how you say it. It's Mjolnir. It's Norse, I believe. You know, it's like, uh, Thor. It's Thor's, Thor's hammer is Mjolnir, I think. Oh, is that what it means? That's pretty cool. Well, yeah, it says it in the flavor text. Thor's magical hammer, made for him by the dwarves Brock and Eitri. By Barack Obama? Brock. B-R-O-K. Oh. You know, Brock from Pokemon? Same mm -hmm. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same I guy. know that, yeah. Yep. All right, uh, let's see the what African the rest of the team's American doing. Dude. Yes, that's him. Yeah, he was pretty he likes, good. He likes Zubat for some reason. I have no idea why. What? He likes Zubats. He has a Zubat. I don't know why he does a Zubat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zubats are Zubat. terrible. They're so bad. Because it's purple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh, that was awful. Alright, Sven is still jungling here. 4, 0, and 3. Uh, Armlet to give him some more farm. And both teams being really passive. I guess no Tidehunter is okay with their position. They do still have the Aegis. And that's probably the only thing that's weird about their playstyle. Kind of. Test, test, hello. Test, test, hello. Anything? Okay. They still have Aegis. So, and they're not yeah, using it. Going. Oh, and that's that's a uh, nice counter ward. Holy guacamole! Oh. That's that's a sentry ward block the the spawn of the of the camp at all. Yes, that one will for three minutes here. And so this... that's awesome. Like look at look at that placement of the sentry ward. It, they got the other ward, they counter warded, and they're gonna block the, the the spawn. Yeah, and that's exactly what they intend to do here. It's like if both teams are passively farming for so long that it's essentially a ward battle. They want better map control. They want their opponents to not have as many places to farm because that's gonna result in them getting less farm overall. And when the actual confrontation comes five minutes later, they're gonna be in a lot of trouble because of it. Mm -hmm. But it looks like they're going to be pushing now. Um, there's a lot of heroes top. The only heroes that not, that's not here is Nature's Prophet. But he can obviously show up whenever he needs to. And he's got a Necro 3 at the moment. So his farm has been pretty solid. Yeah, definitely. Pretty solid. Necro 3s, pretty good units. They're, uh, yeah, they're pretty good. Tier 2 tower is going to get killed top. TC is only 200 gold away from his Scotty. But hopefully he Holy can finish what? it. Before the yeah, push there's comes. already a Daedalus and uh, on a max defense now, uh, 30 minutes in. So, like yesterday, we'll probably see him replace his armlet by something like a heart later on. Or if just, anything. I think the Aegis is about to run out pretty soon here. Oh, yeah. It's got a minute to go. Actually, they're going to catch one. It's Bulba. He's in trouble. He's got a BKB, but he doesn't have any mana now because it's all gotten burned from this Necro 3. So, he's in so much trouble here. It's so long until he could TP. So, even BKB TP is not going to work. There's the first vacuum. Shiva's guard's going to catch him and slows him down another Sprout. And I think this is going to be it for Bulba. He's going to be forced to buy back from this, I believe, if no Titan decides to push into it. Which they should because, like you mentioned, the, the, the Aegis is allowed to... Uh run out yeah so what better time than now and Sven's about to pick up a double damage what but, so they're gonna have about a minute I think until the Aegis runs out um, so they're like they're like Aegis DD and kill the 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 the, the, the TA that's that's pretty much perfect oh holy guacamole 999 uh, is that, crit right there <laughs> that was that with or without armlet turned on <laughs> Uh, without armlet, but with DD as well. So. Oh my gosh. Uh, but that was, of course, without the the ult popped up. So probably with ult and armlet, we'll even uh, see. Fluff getting caught. Great. He's going to die for sure. He throws the vacuum down, but he gets killed. That's a huge loss for them, especially because TA was about to be back up. He's going to have buyback, though. This is going to force him 750 gold loss. Does TC have it? He does. He's got the Scotty. 
He's got the item he needed. There's the shrapnel. He's starting the right close. Look at the slow. The roar oh, as well. Wow. Is oh my god. It's gone. The Aegis is gone. It's already timed out, but he is going to get disrupted. Great disrupt. Vacuum as well from TC. He's got to stay back and kill them from range. Well, you saw how powerful that slow was. That was impressive. Yeah, He's holy gonna... guacamole. The sniper really dropped this man really fast there. Uh, that was quite amazing to see. Uh, oh, the great illusion. Wall as well by the darks here, but it's it's uh, not that great, I guess. The sniper getting really, really low, though. And Mike without mana, they might have to pull back. Sniper just spamming uh, his ult before going back to heal. But he has to go back to heal. I apologize for my camera movement. It's really sloppy. No problem. Super duper. They ended up holding it, though. They lost Bulba. Bulba had to buy back. They, I think there was a buyback from... Uh, do we see buyback? Yeah, Fluff also bought back. There was a buyback from Bulba as well as Fluff. So the Rubik as well as the TA are going to have slightly less gold as a result. But Sniper showed his colors. He crushed through that Sven really fast. And if not for the disruption, I think he was dead there. And he's yeah, going to be able absolutely. to farm really fast now because of this. And his animation looks awesome. Also important. Yeah, pretty important as well. What do you think we're going to see next from the Sniper? Are we going to see crit? Um... It could be a crit. I think Manta style is maybe more likely because it'll give him movement speed as well as some more utility. Also, the illusions can slow, I believe, unless I'm unless I'm crazy. I think the illusions can also proc the slow because the the wall of replica illusion did also slow. So I think a Manta style might be his choice. That or a butterfly, one of those two items. Butterfly would be pretty solid against the Sven and also just generally for damage. But it might be a crit. A crit is definitely a possibility. Maybe At the same time, though, we saw like the Sven is gonna have a really hard time even getting close to a uh, sniper. Mm -hmm. uh, for which I, I think Butterfly is less likely. Uh, but uh, but, but for that same reason, I don't dislike the Manta here, because it's gonna be really hard to get to those illusions and like one hit him. Mm -hmm. And if he's got the movement speed, then it's gonna be even harder for them to get closer. And he can always be slightly better in position, or at least get there slightly faster. So he'll finish up the top. The top creep wave. Man, I love that animation so much. It's like shooting snowballs at people. Yeah, it's pretty awesome of a sniper rifle. Doesn't need and a also, doesn't need bullets, he's gonna shoot snowballs now. Total troll item. The problem is he might walk through Batman. Oh never mind, he went somewhere else. Oh no, there he is. Oh, he skipped Batman. Whoa well, whoa. Well. That was close. He didn't even know the danger was there, but it was. <laughs> yeah, it was a trap. Uh, much like the one he's standing next to. And uh, we see now the Dire, uh, no Tide Hunter, grouping up. Um, Admiral Bulldog still in the jungle, but that's no problem for him as he has teleportation. And I'm not sure what the plan here is, but they're they're surely all being just careful and chilling. And who's, whose move is it right now? Like, who's, like if, if you had to call it, who has to make a move? Who has to... I, it looks like Complexity is just playing this really this defensively right now. I think no Tide Hunter is maybe going to feel a little worried. Um... Bulldog can obviously make up for the carry potential where Sven peeks off now. And the only reason Sven's peeking off is because he only has six item slots. That's the only reason that we're seeing him going to peek off a bit. He will be grabbing an AC next, which is going to greatly increase his survivability against Sniper. That's the main thing to point out, is that he went mostly damage items before. And that's probably a lot of the reason why Sniper was doing decent damage. But I don't think Sniper's farm rate is going to be as comparable to as Sven's is. So I think TC is going to have to be a little careful here. Because um, if he ever gets out of position, then the team fight's going to be over and they're going to lose it. As long as Complexity yeah. has good team um, fight If he ever gets out of position, that's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. I think, uh, Kevin. Just kidding. You cut out before you said what was going to happen if he gets out of position. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I said. <laughs> you got it, man. You can just you can just cast for me. You got everything. Sweet. But, uh, but yeah, we, we, we are going to see a Sven with uh, an Assault Curious and... Uh, that's going to give him a shit load of armor, which is pretty underrated. At least I underrated it uh, uh, before I learned from Perch that every point in armor is going to give you an extra 6% um, and the equivalent of a 6% HP um, towards uh, physical damage, which is all Sniper is, and it's probably Sven's only problem right now, seeing that he has a BKB to handle yeah. the, the other people. He sold this Mask of Madness, by the way, to pick up the Aegis, and the Cheese, I believe, went on Dark Seer. Yes. So Cheese and Aegis for the Dire Team. That's their third Rashawn this game. Very good timing from them. And here comes AC. AC's finished on Sven. It's not going to give him as much attack speed as the Mask of Madness would have, but a lot more armor. 15 extra armor here. And imagine Warcry plus an AC. He's going to be sitting around 
40 army or armor or something like that. And it is going to be a crit. TC picks up a Crystallis. He needs as much damage as possible right now, so I completely encourage this item pickup. He's going to be critting on creeps for about 800. There's the first shrapnel. Going to slightly slow them down. He's got to be so careful, worried about S4's vacuum. That's the main thing. He's going to put an ulti to start things off, doing some damage to Admiral Bulldog. Now trying to counter push. The Necro 3 is up, doing a lot of damage. There's a mana drain from TC as well. He's being really careful here. He does not want to get picked off. Tower gets killed by Nature's Prophet, but are they ready to go in? More ultis being spammed. They're just trying to keep all the support here. It's very low on HP, but his mana is getting low. Trap ramping up. There's a slow again. Look, crit, crit on Sniper, by the way. Yeah, yeah, he does have one. Crystalis. There's the first stun. That's the initiation. They're going in. The right clicks from Sniper are decent, but the Warcry's used. There's the vacuum. Going to pull TC in. Ulti as well. He's gone from the range, though. He's right clicking Sven. Sven's getting low. That's going to be his yeah, first death. Yeah, great scepter there by Mikey, and uh, it looks like the fight's going to continue on. Uh, Bulba might fall down here to Sven. Yeah, definitely going to. That's what's going to happen. And now it's all up to TC to uh, try to push this uh, Sven back. That's their major problem right now. A great stun, and Chen's going to go down as well. Uh, fail a little bit of a failed uh, dual breath, but still one ice bath left. And there it goes. Unfortunately, everyone else is down, and uh, I don't know where everyone else is. Probably healing. Uh, we see Mikey popping out the ghost scepter once again, and that was super useful during the fight. It was what kept them in the fight after the first stun off Bush. And uh, looks like they're gonna be able to repel them, but not without losing one of the racks as well as a tower. And Sven's gonna go in for one more kill. He's he gonna get fluffed, and he does. Oh, TC. A bit oh, great ice path gonna buy him a second. That's gonna keep TC alive, actually, but very, very close there. Thought for sure he was dead as he got Hex. Oh, Bulldog getting so... low. Oh, oh, nice. Beautiful block there with the uh, Necromicons. Oh, not and, enough uh, damage. Yeah, holy guacamole. He almost died from that last Necro. Yeah, those but, are good. Uh, those are good. Um, he, Sniper was forced to buy back there. His positioning in the entire team fight was pretty solid, and that's pretty much what I've been watching in these fights. But he did pick off Aki on the uh, on the Chen at least, so he has been making some solid plays. But they did still lose the mid racks, very close to holding, but unable to do so. I, they've been doing a great job, though, I must say. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, like basically what Sven did too, like he traded him Mask of Madness, which sure adds a lot of attack speed, but it, it also makes him more. Uh, like take more damage from heroes like like sniper and instead mm -hmm. trade it for a, for a, uh, an item that is gonna allow him to tank more damage from heroes like sniper and uh, I think I think that that really showed this fight I mean he was never dangerously low he was able to stay in the fight for for the great majority of it with how without having to reposition just like doing massive amounts of damage to everyone in it oh there's a gank on TC on the bot lane they're going in there's a blink from oh, Sven oh you. this is bad and that's yeah. gonna be it Sniper gets cleaved up. Mikey trying to disable, looking for the roar. There's the roar now, and Bush might actually go down. Bulba's right clicking, doing some good damage. A little nice ice path follow up, and they're actually wow. gonna get money out of this. Bulldog might see a double kill as well. He's doing everything he can, but he's got not enough damage output. And that was actually worth it for complexity, I think. Yeah, that was amazing. As, like when you said that's it, yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. That's Sniper is the one hero that that uh, that they have to pick off. But then a Bulba shows up, and he almost has a Daedalus uh, that's going to help him finish it, actually, that last fight. And then they pick up the two most important heroes from the Dire. Uh, any other hero dying from, from, from the Radiant doesn't matter all that much. Any other hero dying from the, the Dire doesn't matter all that much. But that, the only reason that was an even trade was the heroes that died, and that was uh, pretty cool. I don't, I don't I don't even know like you like you would you would you not say that was an even trade probably I, not I, right I, that was probably good for the radiant I think it was good for the radiant they lost the sniper but they killed the Sven and um, Sven's been mm -hmm. dead he's he's obviously peaked out on items and everything but um, I think it was that was pretty good for them turned out okay um, one other sweet play that I saw in the, that last team fight there when TC died in the mid this was a while ago the mid fight. I saw a pass of cheese from Darkseer to Sven, and that was so sweet, because Sven was getting low HP as with Sniper, and then mm -hmm. Darkseer passed the cheese and he got to use it. It was really cool to see. Was that in the last fight? The middle fight, actually. Not that one that just happened bottom, but... No, no, um, no, but the one in the... Oh, okay. Well, yeah, then I, the I completely fight. misquoted that. I thought Sven was just able to stay there, uh, mainly due to the Zalt Curious. I didn't see the cheese transfer, so... Yeah, he lost the Aegis, um, and then he started fighting Sniper, and Sniper was 100% caught, so he just right-clicked. And uh, the cheese was passed, and that's why Sven was full HP after the end of the fight. It was pretty close, but the cheese made a big difference there. Cheese and the Aegis, obviously. If they could have killed Sven without his Aegis there, I mean, 
They could have uh, yeah, I mean, continued if, if it. If there's no cheese and ages, that, like, that fight could have gone completely different there, right? Like, the, yeah, I, I think the Radiant's completely. not not doing as bad as I thought. And holy shit, man, this is one of the lowest kill games I've ever seen, um, personally, at least. Yeah, it's uh, definitely only, pretty only, low. Yeah, 10 to 17, 43 minutes in, that's insane. Let's talk about uh, Ake's items quick. He grabbed a Dagon, actually, a late-game Dagon here. Very interesting item build, but good against heroes like TA. If you can break the shield down, and then you can use Penitence, and then follow up with a Test of Faith as well as a Dagon. You're talking pretty insane damage towards a solo target. And a lot of these heroes don't have that much survivability, And I, th but I think it is largely going to be towards heroes like TA if his BKB is down. So pretty interesting choice from him. Wasn't a Vlad's. I would have maybe argued that a Vlad's would have been a good choice, most importantly because Sven sold his mm -hmm. Mask of Madness, so he has no more lifesteal. And the, the extra damage from that, as well as the lifesteal, would have been pretty useful. Yeah, yeah, I, I actually find the Dagon a little bit weird, uh, like this late on. He can he can combo with Penitence, though. It's a skill that we don't normally see out of Chen. It's very rare that we see Chen get this late in the game, but you get 32% bonus damage, and you can effectively increase your Dagon as well as your Test of Faith. It does increase his nuke potential, so I think it's going to be pretty cool to see, at least. Mm -hmm. Um... More farming from Complexity now. Fluff is positioned to cover Bulba in case Bulba gets caught. Are there Blink Daggers? No, no Blink Dagger on Rubik. Just on Bulba here. And he does have yep, Daedalus. Just in case he gets cold. Bulldog TPing top. Will he see it? Bulba's going to blink out just in time. Looking for the Hex. No Hex, actually. They don't catch yeah, anyone. Yeah, Factor to help out just in case as well. Did he steal anything? But He's got Sprout. Level 1 Sprout, man. Pretty sick stuff. Pretty he... sick. Awesome. And TC trying to get closer to his Daedalus. Uh, there's an ulti actually in the jungle. Who did they find? It's going to be actually Sven. The pig's doing the damage. He kills the pig immediately, though. There's more slow. They need to catch something. The trap's going to miss. Aww. The blink came from Sven. He barely got away there. He was so close to TC getting a right click off. And if the right click landed, Sven was dead. He was not going to be able to blink. He was going to take constant damage, and the slow would have been there. Even a BKB yeah. would have saved him. That was so close. Yeah, yeah, the main reason he was able to, to live was uh, because of that blink. Really nice job. Um, the pigs do a lot of damage, man. Those pigs are crazy. It's mostly the slow. The damage is not bad, especially this late against a against a Sven. It's not a problem. But if you can't actually right-click that on the Sven in the team fight, that's fantastic. Because just like Scotty, the slow is going to go right through the BKB, I think. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Pigs. Good old pigs. I love pigs, man. Personally, like or? Piglet from Winnie Pooh. Oh crap! And they're gonna engage on TC right now. Looks like he's definitely gonna fall. That's a huge problem they're gonna have. He can't buy back in that zone right away though. But a huge mistake by the Radiant. Looks like Mike is gonna get picked off again. Everyone seems to be off position now. Uh, the four remaining ones are there on the bright side. Sven wow. is about to run a holy walk up holy. And that, that is gonna be the thing. end. Yep. There's nothing they can do about that. If TC dies twice in a row, that's it. That was like a one shot. That was that was insane. And I was just about to say the BKB and the ult for Sven are, are about to run out, and as soon as that happens, they might be able, they might be able to push this back. But uh, right right before it right before that happened, man, Sven just blanked in and Wakamoli the fuck uh, the yeah. <laughs> yes, there was plenty of condiments in that game. So much. Um, yeah, that was crazy. They picked off TC. He was a little bit too far forward. The smoke gate came from no Tide Hunter, and they were able to initiate, pick off the sniper, and then sniper had to buy back. And then the blink came forward. He crit and stunned, and that was it. Sniper died twice in a row. And once sniper dies for free, the game's over. And I think TC played a solid game. He didn't have a lot of kills this game, but his last hits were definitely there. And I think his item build was what they needed against the Sven, but they just didn't quite do well enough in the early game. And I think that Complexity was very close to taking the win there. Uh, but they weren't able to hold. It was very close, but no cigar. Yeah, perhaps with a little bit more, uh, more disabled. Maybe, maybe, maybe even if the if the beastmaster could have had a uh, what you call that thing, the um, ancient staff, the Aghanim, Aghanim oh, yeah. like that, that that would help a little bit because they were relying so heavily on the on the ice paths as well as the telekinesis, and uh, sometimes it, it just didn't happen. Like it, they, they couldn't hold them in place long enough for the for the sniper to do all the damage that he needed to do. Yeah, that might have helped out a lot. We're gonna see an ulti actually. This is gonna be from Darkster. He's got the illusions chasing here. Uh, will Boba be able to take it? I don't know. I don't think S4 is really tanky here. Hex, Heart, and a Shivas. Or Shivas. Hey, the Roshan Courier is normal now. 
What happened? Yeah, what the hell? I probably what whoever dropped it. Russia? Whoever probably dropped it wasn't Lynx? I don't know, who knows. What what happened just now? Shame. Look, it has the same wings as Jakiro too, so uh, I don't I'm know. I'm guessing I don't know, it looks like a baby Jakiro almost. <laughs> Somewhat. Yeah. yeah. Boba, BKBs. BKB there as well. Two, three shot snipers alive though. Baby Roshan's gonna be just fine in this fight, and uh, Bulba or Sniper, someone's, yeah, Bulba's still controlling the Sniper, he might get a kill here. Bulba just refusing to, le to leave, and he's gonna get another, <laughs> another kill, so. Oh, uh, that's Mega Creep, so that's game one, though. Yep, uh, and we've, Bulba disconnect, so. We've got two more, um, I think what I'm gonna do right now is reset my router really quick and see if that maybe solves the problem, so, um, that's okay. gonna be game one. If you guys, if you can hold the lobby for me, that would be appreciated, and it'll be no more than two or three minutes, and hopefully we can get this fixed, so. Okay, so. at the same time, I'll go for a cigarette, and it will be more than, no more than three or four minutes. That sounds great. Alright. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.